In this video, I want to give you some practical pointers into how to help others become more aware of the basics of the matrix control system and also address the trap of forcefully trying to wake up others. Many of us who have taken the proverbial red pill and are increasingly seeing through the lies and illusions of official culture, governments and society can be eager to tell others what we have found out and realized in our journey. We want others, especially our friends and family, to wake up as well. We see how they suffer needlessly, supporting the forces, corporations and institutions which are oppressing and manipulating humanity and leading them off the cliff. So our intentions to wake up others are coming from a well-intended place. Sometimes they are just coming from a place of excitement with regards to sharing information. However, we then quickly realize that we cannot just forcefully wake up others via pushing information onto them. Most often these interactions result in energy draining arguments when no one is truly listening to each other. The cognitive dissonance is too strong and there are many other unconscious defense mechanisms that make it impossible for the other person to receive or even consider the information you present. There are also deeper esoteric and occult reasons why not everyone is ready to be unplugged from the matrix based on levels of being and soul evolution in light of the bigger picture of the evolution of consciousness, which I will address at another time. So there are two strategies that are important to understand and apply when trying to wake up others, external consideration and strategic enclosure. External consideration means adapting to the general worldview and beliefs of another person and thus not pushing information onto someone who didn't ask for it in the first place. It basically means to meet them where they are at and not talking down on them, so careful of coming from a place of superiority. The trap of superiority is very common among many self-proclaimed truth seekers who look down on what they call the herd or sheeple. It means their ego has hijacked their awakening process, which keeps them ironically trapped in the matrix, for they are cold forces who feed off of this form of self-importance. Many of us can easily slip into this trap at the beginning. Sometimes the approach of external consideration involves supporting other people's illusions, because they are not ready to hear the truth, let alone be assisted in becoming unplugged from the matrix control system. In esoteric terms, giving without sincere asking is a violation of free will. It may interfere with the soul lesson and path of the other person, which is not for us to determine or judge. Everyone needs to learn certain lessons for themselves, even if that entails long periods of suffering and struggle. In this context, we cannot do anything for another person, nor save them. As Gurdjieff once said, if you see another man fall down, when he must walk, you can pick him up and help him initially. But although to take one more step is more necessary for him even than air, he must take this step alone, impossible for another person to take it for him. In other words, you can't help people who are not willing to help themselves. If they are not engaged in the process of sincere self-work and earnestly seeking truth for themselves based on their own inner call, it will most likely be counterproductive to engage with them by providing a contrasting point of view. The asking part of the equation doesn't have to be verbal in nature. It depends upon the situation and context. On the other hand, not every asking cue is sincere. So trusting one's intuitive hunches regarding what to share and what to withhold is important. In my experience, simply being curious is not always a sincere form of asking. The more you are engaged in sincere self-work, unaware of your own triggers, shadow projections and mechanical reactions, the easier and more effective it will be for you to apply external consideration without your unconscious stuff getting overlaid on the other person and the more powerful and constructive your impact will be. But again, every situation is different and specific and no general rules apply. Most often it's a process of trial and error. Now the second part, strategic enclosure, relates to having a strategy with regards to how to present information that may challenge another person's belief system. Sometimes it's more productive to remain silent than to drop knowledge bombs on an unsuspecting mind, let alone trying to convince another person through argument and debate, which most often only creates the triggered emotional luge for the occult forces to feed upon. This also ties into the saying, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, 
lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Such is the biblical description of cognitive dissonance in its most basic terms. At other times, however, directness and calling a spade a spade is needed as an appropriate response as well. Once again, and most important to understand, is that the drive to seek out truth in oneself and the world and act upon it with integrity has to come from oneself. No one can do it for another, and no one can push another to do it until he or she realizes the precarious times we live in, acts upon it, and starts to seek truth and work on him or herself. Oftentimes, people do not start to sincerely seek truth or engage in deeper self-work until they have suffered and are confronted with the inevitable disillusionment which subsequently arises and surrender to it. In the words of Liz Green, whether we use psychological or esoteric terminology, the basic fact remains the same. Human beings do not earn free will except through self-discovery. And they do not attempt self-discovery until things have become so painful that they have no other choice. If the individual makes no effort to expand his consciousness so that he can understand the nature of his total unfoldment and can begin to cooperate with it, then it will seem that he is the pawn of fate and has no control over his life. He can only earn his freedom by learning about himself so that he can understand what value a particular experience has for the development of his whole self. What we can do, however, is spread some seeds of awareness, giving people some food for thought, so to speak, without trying to convince them of the veracity of the information, nor having any expectations about how they'll receive it. For example, you can make some hints or provide some selected information and then observe how the other person reacts before giving more, or the person may be even inspired to look more into it themselves. Some seeds sprout, some never blossom, but never underestimate the butterfly effect over time. Once again, though, each situation is different, which goes back to external consideration and strategic enclosure. At the same time, I also have feel and seen that the ideas of external consideration and strategic enclosure have been used as a buffer, an avoidance strategy, and rational to excuse people from being outspoken about the important issues which our world is facing in this day and age or even with regards to what we truly think and feel, our own sense of vulnerability and openness. Oftentimes, there's this irrational fear and paranoia about what others may think of us as individuals, if one is more outspoken, allowing other people's opinions to frame our own sense of self-worth. In the end, it's about acting from your conscience based on your nature and applying your personal gifts and talents while you keep learning your lessons as well at the same time. In the next video, I'll go deeper into what it actually means to be awake beyond a mental information-based understanding of the matrix. Godspeed.